Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video where we are taking an in depth look at the operator modes on the Korg OP6. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at the ring mod and filter mod operator modes. Now, the reason I'm going to group these two together is that they share the same basic idea as FM. And that is that you have a carrier and a modulator. The carrier is the thing that we hear, and the modulator uh, modulates something about the carrier in order to create, create a, a timbral change. In FM, obviously, what's being modulated is the frequency of the carrier, and in ring mod and filter mod, uh, we're modulating something different. This video is very much a follow on from the previous video that I made on the FM modes. So um, I won't be going into detail on a lot of the concepts that I um, covered in that video. So uh, ideas around the algorithms and how the relative levels and frequency uh, relationships between the uh, carriers and modulators, uh, those are all ideas that I went into in quite a lot of depth in that video and I don't want to repeat myself here. Uh, so if you haven't checked that video out yet, uh, my video on the FM mode, I would highly recommend that you go and uh, check that out um, before we go into too much depth into this video because uh, these two modes share a lot in common um, architecturally with the FM mode, a lot of those ideas will uh, translate very nicely. Um, what we're gonna focus on in this video instead is um, how these um, modes operate, if you excuse the pun, and uh, I guess crucially, how they differ from each other. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to the FM mode as well, so that when you are building sounds and you have an idea in your head, uh, you can have a good idea as to which of these modes might give you the result that you are looking for. So let's start by describing what these uh, three modes, so that's FM, uh, ring mod and filter mod are doing technically. So operator one is in FM mode, and if I bring up operator one and I bring up the um, modulator here, which is currently set um, very, very slow, what we hear is that pitch wobble. And then when we make that pitch wobble go fast enough and come into audio range, what we hear is a timbral change rather than a pitch change. So operator three is in ring mod mode, uh, still just a, a sine wave. And as we bring up operator four, which is its modulator again, which is moving very slowly at the moment, what we hear rather than a pitch wobble is a volume, a tremolo wobble, if you like. And again, at the moment, this is below audio rate, but as we turn up the speed, or the frequency rather, of that wobble, rather than hearing a tremolo, we hear a timbre change. Operator five here is in filter mod mode. And uh, as we turn up its modulator operator six, what we can hear, slightly different to operator three, what we hear here, here instead is a filter opening and shutting. And as we make it go faster, rather than hearing a filter wobble, we hear a timbre change. So the same principle applies across these um, three different modulation modes. Um, filter, sorry, uh, frequency modulation, ring modulation, and filter modulation. But the way in which we are generating those timbre changes is uh, different. So let's just hear that one more time um, with the actual uh, timbre changes here. And we'll just do a sweep of the modulator level. So this is filter mod. These are all just on sine waves and one-to-one -one relationships. So that's frequency modulation. Here's ring mod. This is all just with the default settings at the moment. We can, of course, change things around. And this is the filter mod. So we're doing kind of similar things, but different flavors. Now, one thing um, it's worth pointing out straight away, and the keen-eared amongst you might have already noticed this, 
if we compare, so the modulators all turned down to zero now. If we compare a sine wave coming from FM or ring mod, which is slightly quieter for reasons, but they're both nice pure sine wave sounds. Up five, you can hear, has some additional harmonics. Nice pure sine wave, some additional harmonics. And this is just with the um, basic settings here. I'm not doing anything extra. And the reason for this is that the filter modes on the OP6, uh, quite correctly, um, introduce some saturation and some grit and some character, even when they're not doing anything here. So we, we have a sine wave here going through a filter, slightly closed filter for reasons I will get to. But the filter model that's here introduces some additional harmonics and you can see them here on the analyzer as well. So that's just a sine wave going through the filter and that's just a sine wave with a single frequency peak there as opposed to these additional harmonics that have been introduced up here. So the filter mod mode, even doing nothing, introduces some character into the sound, which is worth knowing, I think. So let's continue this basic sound comparison, but with some different uh, ratios. So let's maybe do a uh, one to three ratio, which is a bit of a more interesting ratio. So um, here is um, FM. You can hear as we push that. Modulator up, it gets quite harsh quite quickly. Maybe glassy metallic might be a way of describing that. Uh, here's operator three, which is our ring mod mode. And ring mod is a lot more forgiving in this default setup. And in general, to be fair, it's kind of a bit more organy, maybe I would say. original frequency of our carrier is allowed to exist within the sound a little bit more clearly as opposed to here where that original frequency that fundamental is kind of obliterated when we push that level high with ring mod that fundamental frequency there stays pretty much consistent uh, with filter mod Again, we have that little bit of extra saturation just by turning it up. Like ring mod, we're getting a little bit more of that original fundamental still persisting within the sound, but with a bit more of the harshness that we get from the FM. So the filter mod mode in this basic setup is potentially a way we can think about if we were interested in maintaining that um, that uh, fundamental, so for, for lower sounds. See, so yeah, our fundamental is basically obliterated by that point there. But we can get lots of extra harmonics there without totally treading all over our fundamental. In terms of a sound character, as you would kind of expect, uh, we are, as we uh, increase the uh, amount, the, the level of our modulator, we are opening that filter further and shutting it down further. So that kind of brassy sound that you would associate with a filter, you maybe get here, so brassier, less metallic and less digital, you might even say. Uh, so let's try a relationship um, between these operators, which isn't uh, an integer relationship. So let's, um, let's find a good one with the FM mode first. So let's find something. Wow, wow, wow. 
Um, something like that. So you've got one, uh, 1.17. So let's set the others to that as well. Oops, am I doing the wrong one? Seven. Point one seven. Okay. So uh, non uh, integer relationships tend to create more complex sounds, less tonal. And you can certainly hear with the FM when we have that up at the top. You can sort of still discern the fundamental, but it's definitely harder to hear beneath that atonal character that we're introducing with the ring mod. Again, that original fundamental is still there. It's much, much more gentle in the default settings. And with filter, kind of like before, what we're getting here is this sort of halfway house where we're not treading all over our fundamental so much as we do in FM. But we're not quite getting that same level of sort of metallic atonality. So we're introducing grit and we're introducing that atonality feeling of unease but we're not quite getting to that metallic glassy space and we're not treading over the fundamental as much. So again, kind of like that halfway house between the ring mod and the FM. So let's just do one more comparison between the um, three uh, modulation modes. So I'm in uh, algorithm 12 here and uh, we're just interested here in operator three where we've got these three different um, modulators all running in, in parallel into that one uh, carrier. Um, in terms of their pitches, we've got one that's just uh, an integer pitch. We've got one uh, which is sort of detuned. And then we've got one that's running at a fixed pitch as well, introducing that kind of resonance. So at the moment, we're in FM mode. We're getting quite a complicated sound here. If we were a bit more gentle with the, the levels and, and had a different... Um, uh, level envelopes for the modulators is be actually quite a good way to get kind of an electric piano sound um but probably doesn't highlight the differences quite as well so let's without changing anything else let's change the mode of our carrier here over to ring let's put this back to the defaults i've always been playing with stuff there we go And again, much more gentle. That um, fundamental frequency not being overrun by the other sounds. But just kind of got this grit. There's some sort of bell fun things happening in there. If we raise the levels, we would get more of them, obviously. And uh, but, but for comparison's sake, I don't want to raise them right at the moment. So that's uh, ring mod as opposed to FM. Quite a different vibe going on there. Uh, and then we have our filter FM here. Again, just with the default settings. A lot crunchier. Much more of that sort of a harmonic stuff happening in there. FM. Filter FM. And ring mod. Three different flavors, all working in similar ways, modulating something about the carrier, just whether it's frequency, amplitude, or filter cutoff, will make quite a difference. So everything we've done so far with all of these sounds, uh, we've been doing with the default settings. Uh, but of course, as we know uh, from the FM mode, there are some additional controls that we have for each of these modes. So in FM, we had the feedback and the width, which I covered in the previous video. So let's head on, on over to the ring mod here. And what we see here is that we have depth 
and we have shape. So let's just bring our, so we're just back to the one-to-one -one relationship here. Uh, and let's see what the depth control is going to do for us. And the depth control is almost kind of like having the ability to fine tune the level control because it's affecting the, the depth of the uh, ring mod, the amplitude modulation. And maybe a good way to see this is again if we take the uh, modulator down to um, uh, below audio rate and we take a look at our analyzer here and we can see that at the moment we've got our amplitude of that sine wave being modulated. And uh, there's B, so we can just remember that. Now as we turn B down, we see that our sine wave is not getting squashed as much. As we turn depth back up and take it past 50%, we'll start to see not quite keeping up with us. What's actually happening here, what you'll be able to hear is that it feels like it's doubled the speed of the modulation. That's 100%, if we get it down to 50. Yeah, it feels like it's doubled the speed. It's not quite double the speed. What's actually happening as we've pushed that to 100% is that um, and it's not showing it on on here, sadly. Um, you can see that the, the scope is freaking out a little bit. The reason for that is that now what the ring mod uh, should be doing is actually flipping the phase. So what should be happening is that we're actually going all the way past zero and flipping the shape of the um, the wave shape. But I think the, uh, the oscilloscope here is actually compensating for that so we can't see it. But that's why it sounds like it's doubling. Uh, but that does essentially also mean that we're getting more modulation as well. Okay, so the other control that we have, we'll just go down to 50 for a second there, is shape. And as we turn it up, we can hear that we're getting a more complex sound as well. If we look at the scope, we can see that we're almost getting to like a triangle wave with this particular relationship. We'll get obviously different shapes with different ratios. And actually having these higher ratios will probably help us be able to see what the shape is actually doing. So I turn that shape back down to um, zero. And we look at the shape that we're getting in our waveform. And as I turn it up, can you see what's happening there? Whereas before we had peaks and valleys being sort of drawn into our wave here, when we turn up the shape, we're only getting peaks. So what the shape control is doing in this case is um, rectifying our modulator. Which gives us more homarchically rich sound. It's treading on our fundamental a bit more. And then using that in co combination with our depth is where we'll find all of those different sweet spots. 
and opportunities. modulating parameters yeah, immediately that feels like a great place to put an LFO right or even an envelope having those two controls modulating at different rates. Actually, do you know what? Let's stop talking about it. Let's actually do it. Uh, let's come into mod here. Uh, we've got two LFOs that we can use, LFO1 and LF2, LFO2 would be fine. Uh, go into our fee patch to patch this stuff up and we're gonna go LFO1 to op3's ring depth. And then we'll go LFO two to op threes ring shape. Let's slow both of those down. We're getting things that sound like additive organ swells. We're getting like stuff that sounds like filters, some sort of almost sounds sort of like, almost like a faux wavetable in there as well. All just with sine waves at the moment, of course. Much more gentle, much more forgiving, perhaps, than FM for doing this kind of thing. Um, not as extreme. Um, of course, we could. Discordant. If we had a, just a fundamental to read that bit more. Yes. Lots of interesting things going on there. Uh, it's also worth noting that even without any level happening on uh, operator 4 um, modulating the depth is still going to give you um, a volume change happening there of course it's probably more efficient just to modulate the level but it's worth noting that Yeah, so um, generally speaking, um, a bit more gentle, um, even with that depth and uh, shape turned up, we're still getting much more gentle overtones compared to what we would get with FM. Um, the other thing that we should note here, of course, is that um, we can also set our... Um, let's take off that modulation uh, for a second. We can set our pitches of our, or the frequency rather, of our modulator to be fixed. And that's where you get that classic, classic ring mod sound from um, guitar pedals.
the phone. Uh, much like when we were having the fixed um, frequency relationships when we were talking about FM, uh, this is the sort of thing where you can tune things to the key that you're in. So if I wanted to make this weird, but also work in C. of sort of old school classic quite organic sounding madness to be had there the other thing we should say about the ring mod is because it's so much more gentle is that it is a lot more forgiving when you do more extreme things in terms of the wave shapes uh, so i've been using sine waves here but uh, moving to things like squares Let me go back to a uh, ratio instead. If we had done the same thing um, here with FM, for example, somewhere something like this uh, and set the modulator to square things get pretty squashy pretty quickly things tend to hold together better in ring mod mode so if you need something that's a bit more forgiving for doing more extreme things then ring mod uh, might be the uh, way to approach it Okay, so let's talk about the filter mod uh, mode. So we have three controls here, basically. We have type, which is going to change the type of the filter that's been modulated. We will come back around to that uh, once I've explained the other two. And the other two are just cutoff and resonance, um, which if you've dealt with any sort of um, subtractive synth ever, uh, are terms that are probably very, very familiar to you. Uh, resonance does exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to uh, increase the resonance at the uh, cutoff point of the filter. Cutoff, you would assume is just going to change the cutoff of the filter, but that's not quite right uh, in this mode. Um, and I will show you why, and it's probably easiest to hear if we go over just to white noise. Um, just quiet at the moment, low pass to white noise it would be. So if I just crank the resonance here so that the filter starts to resonate, um, what you can hear as I move across the keyboard is actually uh, that filter is resonating at different frequencies as I play different notes. And that is because the filter in the filter FM and the filter mode actually um, is always going to move um, relative to the frequency of the operator, which means if I change the ratio of uh, this operator working in filter FM mode, it's also going to change the cutoff of the, um, of the filter. Similarly, if I come into the pitch menu and move to fixed mode, the frequency of the um, fixed frequency operator is also going to change the cutoff as well. Uh, if I turn down, just, just to prove this is really happening, if I turn down the, uh, the um, resonance here and change the pitch here, you can't hear the pitch of the noise change because it has no pitch, but you can hear that frequency, cutoff frequency being changed as I do that. So what does the cutoff um, control actually do? The cutoff control is going to basically change the offset. So if I want to change um, where this 
filter is uh, resonating, um, but I don't want to change the pitch of this uh, operator if I had a, a pitch sound in here. Now, the cutoff knob is going to um, allow me to move that independent of the frequency of the operator. Because I'm in fixed mode, that's not going to um, change it. So if you want to do these sort of um, pitched noise sounds, which I'm very fond of, to be honest, um, so I'd use it for quite a lot, then this is um, one mode where you can do it. Um, however, um, if that's all you want to do, you're probably better off using the actual filter mode because it gives you additional flexibility in terms of mixing together two signals. We'll get to that in another video though. So let's just move the resonance back down and um, give ourselves um, a sine wave again, just so we can think about uh, this uh, operator in terms of the modulator um, carrier relationship instead. So um, the final control that we have here is type. And the type is going to change what type of filter is being modulated, which is going to have a, a, an effect on the sound, obviously. Um, so let's just bring this up to full just for a second. We get that sort of brassy feel there that's not as metallic or digital sounding as, as FM. Uh, and let's try some of these other uh, types. We have a uh, low pass filter, LPF. We have a high pass filter. Which actually gives us a little bit more bottom end. We'll get to the resonance control maybe. Actually, let's, let's back to low pass filter and let's give it some resonance. Giving resonance to the filter is going to make things a lot more chaotic. And actually gets things a little, a little bit more wild in some ways than FM, which is interesting, but in a different way, a grittier, maybe more analog sounding, squelchier, wetter, if you want to describe it as wetter. And then at full resonance, really, quite wild. So that's the low pass filter. Next one is high pass filter. Low resonance, kind of similar. I think, yeah, a little bit more bottom end almost. Half resonance. A little bit more under control. real stuff going on in there. We then have band pass, which naturally is going to lower the overall volume because it's less uh, of the frequency spectrum being allowed through. I think smaller movements, generally speaking, with the high resonance work out better. Cool glitchy textures as it picks out. That lower bit there is really sweet. And we have a band reject filter. chilled out generally. We have an MG LPF 12. I, the manual doesn't ever say what MG is, but you can maybe guess at it. So compared with the standard low pass filter, This one has a little bit more grit, a little bit more interesting sounding maybe. With resonance. 
interestingly actually holds together a little bit better. So it's both more gritty and characterful, but also more sort of together on those sweeps. Oh lordy. <laughs> Not with the resonance fill though. Wow, there are some There are some textures there, aren't there? Very interesting. Cool. So both grittier and more together and more chaotic. It's the 24 uh, dB per octave version. some stuff there isn't there sorry it's got so loud uh, I suspect that this uh, filter self resonates a bit more than the other one which is why we're getting all of those additional things going on there sorry I just needed some silence to get over the chaos um, a high pass filter from the same family there that's lovely smooth and brassy Again, chaotic up at the top. <laughs> Whew. Lovely stuff. Same but 25 dB. Similar sort of similar sort of vibes going on in there. Uh, a bandpass filter for that mode. As you would expect with the resonance high. 12 dB version. And then we have the MS20 uh, models as well here which you also get in the um, main filter section. Now these ones overdrive a lot when you push the resonance. Similar sorts of things going on there. Cool. High pass filter. Uh, and that's a lot there. So different vibes going on in there, depending on what you're wanting. I think the MG ones offer a really good range in terms of what goes on with the resonance as well. And of course, you probably want to actually give these some more um, and uh, changing the ratio obviously is going to give you different feels as well. Lovely squelchy. Squelchy things to be had. I 
MS-20 model holds together a little bit better at that high resonance. I think right up until the last moment where it goes properly crazy. Ah, excellent. I no longer need a modular because I can make fart sounds here. One final word before we finish, and we kind of covered this in the FM mode uh, uh, as well. Uh, in the FM mode, um, if we had a, a more um, complex, actually do the right operator, we got here. If we had a more complex um, waveform, and if we, what we wanted to do was actually just give it some um, wobble, we can always uh, set our uh, modulator to be uh, fixed and down in. Low audio rate. How we can make things sound uh, seasick. The same can be said um, for our ring mod and filter mod modes. So, with our ring mod here, if we come across to the modulator, which is up four, and we set that to fixed, and we bring this down nice and low. we get just give the carrier a slightly more complex waveform perhaps triangle there's a way of getting tremolo that works independently to any of the LFOs if we want to use our LFOs for other things Of course, our um, modulator's um, shape doesn't have to be a sign. We can use saws and get fake arpeggios. Some things with squares. We have some of the interesting additive modes here, which will give you interesting pulsing polyrhythms potentially. some cool stuff to be had there. With our shape, when we're rectifying it as well, we can kind of get shuffles in there. So we can get quite complicated rhythmic things happening within our tremolo there, way beyond a normal triangle wave tremolo. Some really interesting stuff happening there. Right? Uh, and similarly, if we uh, come across to our filter mod, um, maybe give it a, um, again, a slightly more rich waveform to begin with. And in our uh, modulate here if we set our pitch to fixed and down nice and low and um, maybe set the resonance lower there and of course the um, what I should have said with the um, ring mod is that the level of the overall modulation is going to be affected by this level which of course we can also control using our uh, 
uh, envelope for that uh, modulator. And having different filter modes. And then again, using different um, shapes for our modulator, especially some of those more interesting additive shapes, we can get interesting. There's the fake arpeggios again. Square waves. Slow it down a bit more again. Get those cool um, rhythmic things happening. And so on. Yeah, so no, don't overlook, especially with the ring mod and the filter mod, um, even more than having that nice pitch wobble, don't overlook the possibilities of creating um, more complex LFOs um, affecting volume and filter this way. So anyway, I hope that was useful and interesting. Uh, if it was, as always, it's always very much appreciated if you can leave the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you're interested in the Op6, because there'll be lots of Op6 videos coming up, uh, as well as some other stuff. I haven't quite decided what yet, maybe some more modular stuff. Um, let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you want to see on the channel, and I will do my very best. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me, as always. Till next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.